Welcome back to Editor's Roundtable on CNBC TV 18. Well, the theme I am focusing on is old is gold, quite literally in stock markets this year. Uh, the old economy versus new economy. And I'm going to do that with the help of the numbers, of course. Uh, now, this is what the markets have done this year. The Nifty is up just about 2% for the year. But within that, just look at the kind of moves that we've seen. Power index, we haven't spoken about it as much as we should have. In fact, 38%. The PSU Bank Index, 36%. The Auto Index up 21%. The FMCG Index up 17%. Uh, you know, for a, for a Nifty, which is up 2%, you have four components which are up 17 to 40%. Why is, uh, and you know, Bank Nifty 16%, the Capital Goods Index 15%. Uh, why is the Nifty up still only about 2%? Because the new age stocks, uh, look at the Nifty IT Index, it's down 30%. IPO Index, which mostly comprises of all the new age uh, stocks, is down 27%. And the Nifty Digital is down about 26%. This is further corroborated by individual stocks. Uh, Coal India. In fact, uh, before Adani's entry, this really was your Nifty stock of the year, up 67%. Uh, ITC, of course, we, spoke, we speak about a lot, 59%. Mahindra, Aisha, and NTPC. Just look at the moves these stocks have seen. I mean, these, uh, these are your 90s stocks, right? I mean, they, they are making a bit of a comeback. Uh, in, the, you know, in the 2020s, all these stocks making a big comeback. And look at what's happened to the... New economy stocks, uh, I'm including IT also in that, of course, Wipro is down 46%, Tech Mahindra is down 41 InfoEdge is down 31 and of course, we've spoken about all these new listings, Zomato is down 54 Nika is down 52 and Nazara Tech is down 42%. But I tell you what, this is not just restricted to India, look at what's happened globally. For example, in the US, the Dow Jones is down 12%, but the Nasdaq is down 32%. It tells you a story, right? And again, the same story over there. Just look at the top performers. Uh, Occidental Petroleum up 148%. Exxon Mobil up 76%. Chevron up 52%. I mean, these are really stocks, uh, of, you know, of as old economy as they can get. Uh, on the other hand, look at Meta. It's collapsed 71%. Cisco and uh, Verizon are also down uh, around 30% or so. So there's a story here, the global story, which has played out in India as well. Of course, in India, we've had our own factors as well. Uh, but you know, it's telling half the story. The real reason these stocks have collapsed, uh, a part of the reason is these stocks had ballooned in 2021. Post-COVID, multiples, not stock prices, multiples that these companies were trading with became three to 10 times of their average multiples. Uh, that was just humongous. And that's because free money was chasing these stocks. Money was available at zero interest rate and that was ballooning up the valuations of these companies. Uh, work from home was assumed as the new normal in 2021. Come 2022, a lot of things changed. Uh, uh, COVID, uh, uh, of course, uh, is no longer a pandemic. Uh, we have, uh, you know, companies back to normal and old investors and the valuations are now getting back to average. Interest rates are moving up and that's why you reset the valuations. And of course, uh, the big one, the old investors are finding it tough to find new investors, which is something you can do it in private market, in public markets. Uh, that's something which is, of course, tough to do. So uh, that's what I thought I'll focus on. Uh, we have a guest joining us now. Shibani Sarkar Kurian is joining us. She's head of research at Kotak Mahindra AMC. Shibani, hi. Good evening. Thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, season's greetings. Uh, are you buying any of these uh, digital or new age economy stocks uh, in the kind of collapse that we have seen? Uh, hi, uh, good evening and season's greetings to you as well. Um, so uh, the way we are approaching markets uh, today is that uh, sectors which have uh, more demand coming in from the domestic side are possibly better placed. There are a significant amount of uncertainties that are still prevailing from a global macro perspective, both in terms of growth, inflation, as well as interest rates. And these would have a bearing in terms of sectors which have global linkages, especially where the technology sector is concerned. As you were rightly saying, one of the reasons that we've seen uh, a significant correction where tech is concerned has been the multiples. So when COVID struck, uh, there was significant amount of deponement of demand, and it was thought that the digital transformation story would be something that would be a structural phenomenon. However, now, given the global macro parameters and the global growth uncertainty that is coming through, uh, there is a question mark in terms of the uh, revenue trajectory for some of these tech companies. Now, while multiples have corrected, but when you look at multiples today, multiples are still higher than their long-term average trends. So it's not that multiples have corrected below long-term average levels. Um, as you rightly pointed out, NASDAQ has corrected sharply, and today NASDAQ would be trading at multiples which are in line with long-term averages, but the same is not true for 
Indian IT as an index and as a basket. And therefore, from our perspective, we are still fairly cautious on the IT space. And if you looked at the commentary of management, management commentary has also changed considerably over the last quarter to becoming more cautious. Uh, we are more positive on domestic stories, which include manufacturing, industrials, banks, and automobiles in our portfolio. All right. Uh, hi, Shabani. Uh, what about uh, the railways? You know, Nimish put together a very interesting theme in there. And there are a couple of stocks that look quite interesting. Some of them monopoly stocks as well. Does that excite you? Yeah, so, um, you know, hi, Nigel. Uh, good evening. So when you look at the entire CapEx story, uh, we do believe that a lot of the CapEx will be driven by public sector spends, which has been the case over the last few years as well. And railways would be one of the segments where incremental public CapEx and uh, the government expenditure flow would go through. Of course, uh, one would have to evaluate some of these stocks on a, a stock-specific basis, but we are fairly confident and positive in terms of government continuing on the public capex spend, specifically rates, uh, railways, roads, uh, ports, as well as water being the three, three or four key segments of spend uh, coming through. Okay. The other big pocket that moved uh, in the last week, Shivani, was autos, right? With very good numbers coming in from the likes of Maruti. Do you think it's too late to get in now or do you see this as a start of a, a structural upcycle in the auto space? Sonia, so uh, if you look at the auto sector, we are now seeing some amount of growth come back after a very, very long time. Uh, period of time. Uh, so what we believe is that over the next few quarters or so, we will start seeing some degree of normalization of growth trends to the uh, post the kind of uh, you know uncertainty and caution that we have seen in the yeah. past. Uh, so what we believe is that uh, for autos, uh, there are a few key drivers. One, of course, the demand trajectory remains strong. Festive season, anecdotally, demand has been fairly strong. Also, uh, execution ability, product launches will possibly aid towards overall growth. I think what is most important is uh, the fact that commodity costs have corrected and some of these companies have already taken price hikes. And therefore, operating leverage should play out fairly strongly and you should mm. see fairly strong earnings uptrend. Uh, valuations are still fairly uh, reasonable in this sector. Our preference has been for passenger vehicles followed by two-wheelers in this space. Uh, and that continues for us. Okay, Shibani, thanks a lot for taking time out for us. Uh, have a good evening uh, and a good Thank weekend. Thank you so much. That's the view from Quota. Actually, we failed to address uh, the biggest event of this week. Uh, we're talking about old is gold, uh, the comeback of Virat Kohli. I think Absolutely. for me, this was the <laughs> highlight of the week. Yeah, and the way he what won us the match. What a champion. And, right. you know, it just made a lot of people eat their words, uh, me included. And, uh, you know, uh, made a lot of people have eggs on their face, again, me included. <laughs> well, I thought, you know, he was done. Uh, you know, Especially uh, the last over, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, that away. second last over when he yeah. told Hardik, I'm not taking the, the second run. <laughs> yes, yeah. The look he gave him yeah. and he smacked two sixes. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, the, 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 you know, the, the confidence of the man, he knew it that, you know, yeah, he, he can win, win for yeah. And I mean, th this is what, uh, you know, you have to, just winning the game. And games like this that made Virat I think it's one of the best team. matches of our generation, at least, that Absolutely. we've seen in recent yeah. times, yeah. right? Absolutely. Haven't seen that kind of performance. Okay, folks, I thought you would say the biggest you know, takeaway from the week is that two days holiday, which is not... <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to see it next? I don't and know. And I really hope, the, if NSC is listening, <laughs> next day after Diwali, you cannot have market working, no matter what happens. This is a bad precedent that was set this week. Please don't do it again. Okay, next year, there's many more holidays <laughs> coming. But with that, it's curtains down, folks, on another episode of Editor's Roundtable. Have a great weekend. See you again bright and early on Monday.